Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 30th and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see where our low pressure system is plain as day and where our frontal system lies currently. There's a lot of sunshine out there actually in advance of this frontal system, but those clouds are going to come rushing in here pretty quickly as we go through the afternoon hours. So get out there and enjoy that while you can because this frontal system is not far off. And then we've got some showery, unsettled weather as we go through Wednesday, Thursday. We've also got some winds picking up tonight. We'll take a look at that. And we've also got some big waves out there approaching the coastline as we go on in through the day tomorrow. So Doppler radars overlay. There's the frontal system and you can see the Langley radar starting to pick up some of this activity and that will be moving in as we go through this evening across portions of Western Oregon, Washington, and up into British Columbia. So if you want a nice affordable home weather station, does all kinds of cool stuff, graphs all the data for you, stores it in the clouds. So you don't have to worry about that lightning strike detector, ultrasonic anemometer, haptic rain gauge, tell you how long it rains at your house. I wish I had one of these when I was a kid in the Pacific Northwest. Very fun stuff. You won't regret it. Click on the link down below to save 10% off. Now, last 24 hours lightning, we talked about that. Eastern Oregon, Idaho, that did come to fruition. And this frontal system has been producing some lightning. It's losing some of its punch, though. We're not looking at widespread lightning or anything like that across western BC, Washington, or Oregon. Can't rule out a strike or two, but for the most part, this lightning activity is on the wane. However, Wednesday, Thursday, a little bit of a different story, and I'll explain that here more in a moment. Looking at precipitation over the last 36 hours, you can see Bellingham, some decent amounts. I mean, we got some pretty widespread precipitation and some big amounts across some of the higher train, Vancouver Island, Western BC, as you can see. And if we go down towards Portland, you see some decent amounts across the coastal areas as well. Not a, a ton for everybody, but indeed a widespread rainfall event. Let's see what happens when we click in a little bit further. You can see uh, the Wildcat Fire, maybe a couple tenths of an inch, quarter of an inch, and then you go up north a little bit there and you're not looking at a lot of precipitation that fell, but at least there was a little bit for the Labor Mountain fire out there also. So yeah, I wish I had better news to report on that, but we do have a bit more coming and then we'll take a look at the extended forecast as well. Oh, let me check out the Bear Gulch fire also. You can see some pretty healthy precipitation amounts for some locations. So hopefully that is helping to suppress the Bear Gulch fire. And also uh, yesterday we were a bit windy in front of the coastal areas. You can see 32. Whidbey Island topping out at 51 there, not bad. You can see out towards the Hood Canal Bridge, maybe some gust into the 30s as well. But it is going to get windy again here tonight for some locations, especially northwest interior and for some of the coastal regions. I'll show you more on that here in a moment. Now, looking at the European, this is where we are right about now. And you can see that trough here at 500 millibars, our storm system just south of Haida Gwaii. And again, this will be weakening as it's with us, but it's going to spend its entire life cycle right out there at Beam, Vancouver Island, and eventually pivot across the area. Short wave moves through British Columbia. Ridge really gets established as we go on in through this upcoming weekend. And then probably some nicer weather, even some offshore flow coming. So let's hope we get enough precipitation to knock down some of those fires because offshore flow can kind of rejuvenate those fires. And we might continue to kick off some smoke as we go on into the early portion of October. But we'll take a, a more detailed look at that here in a moment. Now, looking at where our storm system is at 10,000 feet, you can see that chillier air arrive as we go through Wednesday and Thursday with thunderstorm potential here across the area. Then look at this ridge start to redevelop there out over the Gulf of Alaska. You go from big trough to big ridge as we go through this weekend. Another pattern change likely coming to the Pacific Northwest. Now, here we go. First things first. There's the frontal system. There's our low pressure system out there, probably dropping down towards 974 millibar. So pretty strong storm, but it is not in any hurry uh, to rush through the region here. And it's going to spend its life cycle again, like I mentioned, filling out over our coastal waters, but it will bring multiple rounds of precipitation with it. It'll be kicking off some big waves and some wind at times for some uh, locations. Also a thunderstorm or two. I'm going to go out there and try to get a water spout or something tomorrow, maybe get lucky. It's like chasing a needle in a haystack, but you know, that never stops me from trying. And then we go through this weekend here and we start to reestablish the ridge across the region. Now, 100 meter wind speeds, and you can see why these waves are being generated. Look at these strong winds out there. There's our initial frontal system. And you can kind of, if you look closely, you can see those winds pick up across the Northwest interior and some of the coastal areas. And again, the storm just spending its entire life cycle spinning there in filling off our coastal areas before you can barely even detect it anymore as we go towards this week and we start to get that ridge redeveloped now looking at maximum individual wave height so here we go through the day uh, to uh, actually let me update this has this been updated there we go okay 
So this is the 12Z data. This is actually hot off the presses. And you can see this wave action as we go on in through the day Wednesday. Again, probably peaking right there about, what, 5 p.m. or so <clears throat> along the Washington, Vancouver Island coastline there. So yeah, we go out there and catch some waves. Uh, might as well. Uh, but yeah, if you missed on, if you've been missing that wave action during the summer months, it's a good time to get out there, pick your favorite wave spot. But do remember that Cape Disappointment is closed unless you've got some kind of connections to get out there. But otherwise, it is closed. I think it's closed all the way till next year, so you have to pick a different spot. Now, taking a look here, lightning flash density potential. Now I'm going to scroll on in through the day to day. You can see that frontal system kind of losing its punch as far as lightning is concerned. But when we go into Wednesday, you'll see some of this start to come up across Southwest BC and Western Washington. This is Wednesday late morning. Here we go through the afternoon hours. We do have that thunderstorm potential better across Washington, some of Southwest BC and maybe a Vancouver Island versus Western Oregon. Then we go on in through Thursday and you can't rule out some uh, thunderstorms here again. Again on the day Thursday. So eyes on the sky tomorrow and Thursday if you like to watch those clouds and those heavier showers roll through and some of that unsettled weather. Maybe catch a lightning strike on camera or something fun like that. Uh, tomorrow and Thursday are the days to do it. So taking a look here, accumulated 10 meter max wind gusts on the North American model. This is on the high side of things, but you can see it does kick off these winds tonight and some of the gusty winds for the coastal areas. 39 in Seattle and 44 in Olympia, 42 in Tacoma. That would start to cause some issues. These winds getting up over 40 miles per hour early in the season can cause power outages. However, the European is probably closer to what we can expect. You can see maybe some 45 mile per hour gusts across the Northwest interior, maybe a 50 mile per hour gust for the coastal areas but inland here you can see more realistic i believe probably in the mid 30s upper 30s however the european is kind of a compromise between the two and again if you start to see some of these gusts showing up for olympia at 44 that could be an issue and it does show some decent gusts for the coastal areas as well you notice we're not looking at a lot of strong winds out here because that low is just kind of sitting and filling and dying we're not really bringing that strong pressure gradient across the interior portions of the pacific northwest at least not with this round now total precipitation in inches this is from where we already, you know, this is not including what fell the last 36 hours or whatnot, but you can see that we do bring some decent amounts. You can see Seattle up towards three quarters of an inch by the time we get to Friday morning. Uh, again, a nice round of precipitation coming for Vancouver Island, the Olympic Mountains, you know, multiple rounds coming for the coastal areas from the Cascades getting decent amounts as well. And big rain shadowing there for places east of the mountains. And you can see some of that rain shadowing going on across portions northeast of the Olympic Mountains as well. So here we are. Let's look, take a look at the, the long term, the long range forecast. And this is the European artificial intelligence. There goes our low swinging through. And then what comes after that? Well, it does show that ridge. It's also got this low across some of the inner mountain west, across some of the southwest, it looks like. And this ridge wants to stay with us. That could even drive some offshore flow as we go on into early portions of the next week. And then look at this. It wants to throw this next trough at us with this big ridge across the Gulf of Alaska. You can imagine this north flow coming down off the coast to BC and bringing us some chilly weather with this upper level low. We'll see how that trends over the next few days, but it kind of wants to reinforce that as well as we go on in through the first half of October. So maybe some more fun weather off there through the extended forecast. Uh, and again, 925 mil of our winds. Uh, this is the low pressure that we're dealing with now, but as we go on through the extended watch, what happens is we go through Sunday, look at the wind start to turn back offshore. So hopefully we can get some additional precipitation across some of the bigger fires east of the Cascades and the Bear Gulch fire. So this offshore wind does not try to become a player and redevelop some of these fires or give them a, a bit of a boost here over the early portion of next week you can see through sunday through monday we're still offshore and that continues on in through portions of tuesday as well we finally switch up that pattern and maybe kick things back on shore as we go towards the mid portion or the end portion of next week we'll be watching that over the next few days first things first though now across some of the higher terrain you'll notice that if you're across the back country if you're hiking the pacific Coast trail if you're camping and if you're out in your cabin out there or whatnot or just driving through you notice it's going to be quite a bit chillier and places like paradise could pick up a little bit of snowfall as well maybe stevens pass some snow mixing in at times shouldn't be too disruptive however and if you like check out the patreon page probably the best way to donate to the channel so anyway oh yeah so a worldwide weather watch i'm going to start doing videos on this again i'll just kind of do this uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, whenever something is interesting, uh, something interesting going on across the planet, I'll just go ahead and do it there and I'll update it on that channel. 
So yeah, check that out, Worldwide Weather Watch. But anyway, uh, yeah, enjoy that sunshine while it lasts. Frontal system coming in, showers Wednesday and Thursday, big waves, some winds picking up tonight. Active weather here with our first significant fall system here so far this season. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys then.